Welcome to my neighborhood, where I'll interview several industry luminaries and interesting people who are changing the state of the art in accounting software technology. Some of my guests are CEOs of leading corporations that you may have already heard of, maybe you're already using their products, or I think will soon be using their products, as well as some interesting thought leaders who help us learn more about technology and how to put it to use. Today I'm joined by Josh Reeves, the CEO and co-founder of Zen Payroll. Josh is a graduate of Stanford University with a bachelor's science and master's in science in electrical engineering. He's also been named the 2012 Forbes 30 Under 30 in technology. And he's the CEO and co-founder of a company called Unwrapped, uh, which was later purchased by Context Optional and then Efficient Frontier and eventually Adobe Systems. So he's been involved in many startups over his career. He also is a contributor to Entrepreneur.com, The Wall Street Journal, Forbes Magazine, and The Business Insider. So help me welcome Josh Reeves. Welcome, Josh. You've had quite a bit of success in your early career, and I really like uh, hearing from you kind of what got you started, what led you down the path of being a serial entrepreneur in the technology world. Uh, really good question. Um, it's one of my favorite questions to ask folks when we're interviewing them. Mm -hmm. uh, where did it all begin? Right. Um, so for me, it actually began uh, being born in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, both my parents are teachers, uh -huh. so uh, academics was always a strong focus for me. But I got very interested in engineering early on, mm -hmm. and I describe engineering as really uh, a curiosity and understanding how things work. Mm -hmm. And then really the heart of entrepreneurship to me is always trying to make things better. Never accepting the status quo as the way things should be, but always thinking about how they could be. And so when I applied to Stanford, it was a wonderful opportunity to kind of build more of a foundation in understanding how the world worked, but also how could I go take action to try to solve problems that I cared about. So instead of just learning about how things work, you kind of turned your focus towards creating a better way for things to work. Is that yeah. pretty accurate? I think when, uh, when I was a child, obviously, children don't understand too much about things like engineering or entrepreneurship, right. but the underlying concept is just loving to understand the way things work and then always trying to improve them. And right. so that was something that I became very, very focused on during my time at Stanford mm -hmm. and having exposure to Silicon Valley was the amazing set of tools that were now becoming available right. to so, us. So like the toys, were you, were you working physical toys in your mind early on or were you th having other thoughts about you know, process or something? Because it's electrical engineering, right? Yeah. So that's not so much physical as it is more mathematical. Yeah, I started at Stanford <laughs> 2001 to 2005. Right. Um, and it was right after the software bubble had burst, yeah, if you remember yeah. back in 2000. Yeah. And so a lot of students actually went into EE as just a way to build a good foundation. Uh -huh. All three co-founders of Zen Payroll are actually electrical engineering yeah. graduates, which is uh, more of a coincidence, not a prerequisite to yeah. building a payroll. Yeah, company. that's isn't that mostly hardware that you learn about? Um, -E -E? I was actually all signal processing, so okay. it was mostly all math, and okay. I was working in the neural prosthetics lab. Okay, so we were actually uh, implanting electrodes inside brains, um, mostly monkey brains, so they could control robotic arms. So it was really trying to help make it easier for folks that have lost limbs to control prosthetics. Ah. Also not a topic very related to payroll, <laughs> no, but not so much payroll. a very, very interesting yeah. uh, technical challenge nonetheless. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's fascinating. So did you have like hobbies or particular things you did as a kid that sort of, I don't know, helped you build this, uh, this skill set that helped you to, you know, become really good at uh, engineering in general? Um, well, I think one of the things I was most involved with as a child was Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. And so um, my brother and I are both Eagle Scouts. We did a lot Ooh. of camping and outdoors activities in Marin. Yeah. If you've been to Muir Woods or Muir ah, Beach, yeah. my yeah. Eagle Scout project was at Muir Beach. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the lessons in those programs are about kind of self-sustainability, building things right. with your own hands. Um, so my mother has a funny story when I was a really young child. You know, you would play with blocks and right. be in preschool. I would always organize them by shape and color ah. and try to kind of create order out of chaos. 
So I guess it started so maybe, out a pretty, pretty long time ago. So maybe for those of us who are parents and maybe looking at our young children, we, we want to spot the, the engineer. Uh, the, the, the one that's organizing maybe is the guy that's going to help with business process. And the guy that takes the, the, the Legos and puts them together is more the physical engineer or something <laughs> like that. I mean, it's, 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 I think there's some, there's some indicators probably, yeah. in kind of one's natural bias. My parents are both teachers, both taught English and history, so right. I think I surpassed their math and science skill yeah. set when I was in middle school. Did you do any music? Um, I played the clarinet for okay. a year or two, but my brother was the one that had more of a musical ear. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, uh, there's a lot of correlation between math, music, and accounting, it turns out. It's sort of rhythmic and all sorts of things in music as well as patterns and all that stuff. I just wondered if that was something that, that you had... Uh, come to like as well. I, I very much appreciate music. I think, um, like you said, it's a good way of thinking about it. Yeah. I think a lot of double E for me, studying electrical engineering, right. it wasn't uh, specifically because I wanted to go work in semiconductors when I graduated. Right. It's actually that kind of pattern matching. Yeah. How do you understand trends? How do you see through a lot of data? Yeah. Um, and then also a lot of teamwork. I mean, I was mm -hmm. very involved in uh, both lab teams, but also uh, in high school I did crew. So I was on the rowing okay, team, yeah. and so we did quite a lot of um, collaboration, which I think is the heart of business as well. Yeah, yeah. I was a, a music major for some of my college years, so I, I, I found the computer, uh, it was kind of a long time ago, I guess, uh, when the personal computer was just really coming out, but the, the computer took that interest I had in patterns and music and things and just made me say, ah, this is it. Yeah. Uh, did you have anything where you just kind of whether it was the computer or a particular tool or a particular thing you just got exposed to that all of a sudden just changed and, ah, this is what I'm going to do for my life? Yeah, I think um, I can think back to high school and obviously what I'm most focused on and have been since graduating now almost 10 years ago is software. Mm -hmm. But I really started getting more exposure to software in high school. And yeah. we were in a summer kind of project um, working with students from around the world. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that really kind of opened my eyes was how much the internet was creating a level playing field where you yeah. can now have collaboration, communication, you could access and interact with people all over the world. Right. Um, and both my families, on my dad's side, they're from Pennsylvania, my mother's side is from Bolivia. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that you can now have those interactions so much eas more easily, Right. Um, that's what really, I think, awakened my interest in, like, this is a transformative change yeah. that is not just going to affect my personal life or going to affect one facet of my life. It's affecting aspects of everyone's life. Yeah. That's the underlying pattern. I think for me, um, whether it's obviously the business I'm building or investments I've made in friends startups that I'm supporting, right. um, it's seeing an opportunity to bring efficiency, to kind of remove unnecessary pain. In this case, right. to bring knowledge that you've collected to an audience that right. could benefit. Um, that's one of the main forces I think that technology has in the world is to kind of cut out a lot of that middleman dynamic and yeah. create more transparency, yeah. um, create more direct connections. Right. Which well, and you mentioned good. the level, the leveling, the level playing field. You might have said, I yeah. forget what, how you used level. That's how I said it. But I, we've, I've, there's a lot of books out on this topic too. You know, the, the world is flat and all that stuff. And yeah, it's just an undeniable trend that, that allows us to do things at such scale that's uh, in incredible. I think the key word for me is leverage, mm -hmm. right? The ability for us to have leverage to impact many people, right. hopefully in a positive way, right. um, is both empowering and also, I think in many ways, a responsibility for people involved in technology because we can have such a big impact with how we spend our time and the products that we create. What kind of new set of, of services or opportunities would an accounting firm have by, by talking with you? Yeah, so I think um, it's funny for you to share your story. I can think back to so many hundreds and thousands of folks we've talked to that yeah. have similar stories and experiences they've been through. Um, you know, one of the core ideas we had when starting the company over two years ago was, well, first we had to go talk to a lot of folks. But right. out of those conversations, one of the core ideas became, you know, small businesses need to have a, a business partner. They want to have yeah. kind of an advisor they can work with um, likely independent to help them with a lot of these back office tasks. Yes. And obviously we're on a mission, our goal is to go really make that as simple and right. intuitive as possible. But for meeting all these bookkeepers and accountants and third party, mostly local, mostly in right. their community service providers, we got excited about the shift towards them becoming more of a full service provider. And that's yeah. how you used your message. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think of it because I guess the Sleeter Group is very involved with helping the accounting professionals, you know, find new, uh, new services in the new world of the Internet and all that stuff and actually shut down other services. I think of it as if I'm a small business owner and I need to do payroll, I might find zenpayroll.com and I might sign up for it as a small business owner, but if I really don't understand what I, uh, anything about the options or my needs or I can't articulate them, that's where that professional comes in and, and helps by understanding what you've got and what their needs are if it's a, a good match. Yeah, I think of it, <clears throat> it's about empowerment, right? At mm -hmm. the end of the day, like you said, there's a set of things that are just highly manual, not really that value add, right. that no one really enjoyed doing by hand anyways. That's right. um, and they had to do it, and that was why it was almost a necessity. And right. even payroll for some folks became a loss leader because they kind of had to do it to grow their business. Right. Um, our goal is to take that manual piece and make it much more automated. Yeah. But a lot of these providers are becoming full service providers. They can do expense management, they can do bill payments, they can do payroll, they can do um, obviously accounting and bookkeeping, and they're using products like Bill.com or Expensify, yeah. or for time tracking T-sheets, or for us, payroll, yeah. Zen payroll. Um, we're working together to enable these accountant partners. Yeah. Um, and we have a lot of folks signing up uh, oh. very, very quickly. Well, that's good. So let's go back to uh, the earlier question. That other one, the second yeah, one. Yeah, that second one. That was a long first one, but it was I my remember. fault. <laughs> you remember. Okay, what about, what would you give, what would advice you for young advise uh, the, the young person wanting to start out here? Um, so I think I, I have a lot of advice, um, and mostly I think a lot of it ties to mentorship and the fact that I've really enjoyed being mentored by others. Right. And I think we all have a responsibility as a part of that cycle to also mentor right. those that we can help. Um, but I was just at Stanford two weeks ago talking to a number of students, so it is top of mind. I agree. Um, one of the main pieces of advice I give folks is, you know, maybe if you're going to want to start something eventually, but want to join a company initially. Right. Um, figure out who you want to spend time with mm -hmm. because you become like the people you're around. And so um, definitely for a new student graduating, I think it's a very stressful time figuring out kind of what uh, yeah. job they want to take. Think about the type of people that um, you aspire to become like, that share the same value structure that you do, right. that share a similar mission-driven mindset, right. and surround yourself with those types of people. So that's one piece of advice I have for So pick your students. friends carefully and then surround yourself with them a lot. Yeah, and, and really be open about wanting to become like these people because you yeah. will regardless. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of just a byproduct of how you spend time with people. Yeah, okay. Um, and then the second piece of advice, and this really applies to everyone, and I always remind myself about this. I think in school there's a really specific structure that kind of creates introspection, right? Every right. semester you have to think about what classes you liked and then what classes you want to do next. Yeah. But when you start working, um, there's no more structure. You have to create your own structure to figure out, am I enjoying what I'm doing? Am I deriving fulfillment from how I'm spending my time? Right. Um, otherwise, you could have eight years pass by and then kind of wonder, why am I still doing this? Yeah. And yeah. so my advice is always, whether it be quarterly, yearly, for me, I like to go at least every Sunday into a park or a natural setting and Mm -hmm. kind of take some time to think about how yeah. I'm spending my time. Take that time for introspection <laughs> because I think it's the source or the key rather to, to happiness in what you do. So do you need to do well in the classes during college or even high school or something uh, in order to excel at them later in life? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, um, I think learning itself is an is a ongoing process. So I think mm -hmm. definitely in school where there's a lot of classes, I always give the advice to Try as much as you can, because the goal is to figure out what you really connect with. Right. Um, but I think once you start working and you start focusing, and that's to me the, both for a company, running a company, sure. the biggest reminder I have to the team is how do we stay focused? Yeah. But I think as individuals, the same logic applies. Right. Um, how do we focus ourselves on the specific things we care about? Um, I think that's a learning process. And right. I, I tell the team whenever we hire someone, there's really three key ingredients to to really finding a lot of fulfillment from your work. It's number one, to like what you're doing. Number two, to be good at what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then number three, to have what you're doing be important and valued by the organization you're a part of. Right. And if you have those three key ingredients and you're working with people that have shared values, mm -hmm. that's, that's almost magical. That's something that we strive for, not just in our business, but actually in how we hope to enable and support our customers' businesses. Right. So um, I did something in college, I, I, I took, uh, <laughs> I took differential calculus and integral calculus took me. <laughs> so I got to that second semester, quarter, or whatever, calculus, 
and I just I just failed the thing. Mm. So, but I liked it, but I was failing, and I took it again the next quarter, year, whatever. And I at during my failure of it, I was the stress. I guess part of why I was failing, I had a big load of other classes. So yeah. it's just maybe it's the focus. It's the focus thing. Yeah. So, but then what what I found was I took it again and I aced it. It's like I got to those points where I remembered having total trouble with that test and I knew what to focus on. So yeah, I I don't believe in do overs, but. Uh, in the context of a, of a school class that you're not doing well in but you kind of like, it's easy to kind of say, nah, I'm not going to go there because I'm no good at it. Yeah. But, you know, if you if you really think you like it, just try some more. Yeah. Well, there's the, one of the sayings, right? I mean, a lot of the most rewarding and enjoyable things in life don't come easy. Yeah. You have to work to really earn them and be rewarded by yeah. them. One of my favorite sayings um, is a journey of a thousand miles uh, begins with a single step. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's not easy. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Right. Um, it takes time to ultimately achieve that, right. that satisfaction. And, and I, I think maybe you don't necessarily find that you're passionate about it at first. Uh, if you keep doing it, you might find less or more. And so never, never, it's never yeah. over. Yeah. I have a simple, um, so we're talking about kind of the focusing piece. Yeah. One of my favorite ways to dive into that topic is rather than ask someone what they like doing, yeah. ask them what they've um, said no to or decided not to do recently. And if you can't think of like five things that you've either declined or said no to, then you're probably saying yes to everything and you're not really being that focused. Ooh, I like that. Because I say yes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fun to say yes. Yeah, I mean, you want to help people, right? And so yeah. you, saying no is a kind of a hard thing. Yeah. So, well, what motivates you? When, when you get up in the morning, what do you, you know, why do you go to work? What 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 are you thinking of on a daily basis that, that yeah. this really makes you ex excel so much? Yeah. Um, so for us, I mean, I'm 31 years old now. So mm -hmm. Zen Payroll, we've been working on it for about two and a half years. Um, we took a very deliberate approach to when we started the business on, mm -hmm. you know, I say to you, and we've talked about this before, I want to spend the next 50 years building Zen Payroll. Right. I hope to spend hopefully the rest of my life helping the company on achieve payroll. its potential. Yeah. Um, so it's that big to you. Yeah, how did that start, right? How, yeah, did, that, yeah, how yeah. did that come to that? Because I didn't say that, obviously, when I was 10 years old. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know too much about payroll then. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for me, it, it was really more about, to actually the first thing we talked about, um, using technology to solve a problem right. and really connecting with, which, with the impact we're having on the world right. and really having the chance to make something that is complex, simple, something that has a lot of unnecessary pain, much better. Right. Um, and when we started Zen Payroll, it was a personal inspiration point. Each of us as founders had run our previous businesses, been using other systems, um, and also had family that had been doing payroll for decades mm -hmm. in a very frustrating way. Yeah. So we had that connection point. Um, but what really drives me now is really, again, the, the core objective we had early on. It was and we have three specific missions and outcomes that we're working towards, and right. I can go through them really quick. Sure. One is, you know, how do we make it easier for a business to succeed? Yeah. Right? Small businesses, um, and CPAs are small businesses too. Yeah, they, these are, their own businesses are small and exactly. as well as their clients, yeah. I mean, these are our heroes. Mm -hmm. These are folks that are following their passions, trying to build a business they right. believe in, offer a product or service they care about. Right. And, you know, the cards have been stacked against them for decades. Mm -hmm. They've had to wear not even three hats, ten hats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of government compliance, payroll taxes, all these different pieces right. that make it harder. We have the opportunity to make that radically simpler. Just essentially make it go away from the perspective of having to comply. You you take compliance away yeah. from my my hat, one of my hats that I can give to you. Exactly, and that's yeah. why trust, we yeah. talked about that earlier, is so that's critical. Right. But that's what we got inspired by, by looking at companies like Square earlier right. on. Right. Um, it's the chance to take something today that's manual, uh, all the compliance taxes, all the payroll right. payments, um, anything tied to the government around compensation. Mm -hmm. um, how can we put all of that in software? Because it's black and white. you got to send this payment yeah. to this place. No you got to send this filing to this place. That's right. Why should you ever have to fill out your name more than once? Yeah. Right? You know, If you fill it out once, we can put it in all the forms for right. you. Right. So once we achieve that goal, which is to basically kind of take on all the work the government needs and do it for you, yeah. that's one of our primary goals. Right. Um, and every day I look at night going to bed at the, the small businesses that have signed up. Yeah. And that's really fun because you see this crazy, awesome cross-section yeah. of bakeries and flower shops and 
right. was um, two equestrian training centers right. in the last few days. Um, New entrepreneurs trusting you to help them with something that if get if they get it wrong, uh, they've got not only penalties but perhaps business failure. Yeah, and knowing that we're saving and them trusting. time and money, yeah, um, so they can hopefully have a more successful business. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's a huge part of what gives us fulfillment yeah. in what we're doing, and that's actually one of our biggest hiring filters. Right. When we look at the people we bring into the team, you know, first it's culture fit, yeah. values alignment. Right. Two, it's the passion for this customer, for solving right. this problem. Right. And then three is their skill set, yeah. right? And sometimes other companies might reverse that. For us, yeah. you know, thus far we know it's been really critical to our success to have every single person on the team really care about the customer we're helping. And it's why every month, I mean, the entire team does customer support once a month. Yeah, um, so I see. Them. So you start with who you are as opposed to what you know when you're hiring somebody. Yeah. What you can do comes only after you convinced us who you are is who we want to work with. Yeah. And it, I mean, I like we have that. six core values in the yeah. company, but those are... And I, I would say to uh, the, uh, the student who's about to graduate and go looking for a job, Yeah. I think that they need to really hear what you just said because it is so much about who you are. Uh, I've hired people over the, all the years and I really focus on people. It's just because I know we can teach or I know we can when embrace their, their, their who they are and, and, and turn that into productivity. Yeah. Uh, but I can't fix uh, someone that's just not a, a good culture fit. So. Yeah, my favorite word is um, authenticity. Yeah. I think there's many reasons to start a business, many ways to build a business. Right. But in our case, we know the values that bring us together as a team. Right. And we don't have them on a wall. Because right. to me, if you have values that represent you, it is who you are in all aspects of your life. Yeah. Um, you don't need to be reminded about them. You know, it's basically yeah. who you are or not. That's right. Well, so again, I'm, I'm a college graduate. I'm going out. I'm going to have an interview tomorrow. How do I communicate to you who I am as opposed to, well, I know C, C++, um, all the web technologies. I'm a super techno. I got straight A's. Yeah. How do I commu communicate who I am? So most of my interviews, which I'm doing quite a bit of these days because um, mm -hmm. we're hiring quite a bit, yeah. um, are mostly, I mean, you can almost revert back to when you were a three-year-old. Yeah. It's me asking why. Okay. So whenever we talk about something, if someone chose to do this project, right. it's always really interesting to know why they chose to do that. Right. So not the things where they did it because it was just the thing to do, but when they made a choice right. um, and how they thought about that choice and what drove them making that choice right. is to me the heart of who someone is. Yeah. Because we all have many things we can do with our time. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that we all choose to work on this specific problem and, and building this business right. um, is what brings us together and what, what really ties us together. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, uh, and it happens both ways. In any of these conversations, you know, sure. my advice to students, you're interviewing the company as much as they're Absolutely. interviewing you. I tell everybody and that so you interview me because if you don't like me, then we're not going to yeah. get on anyway. <laughs> but the simple yeah. answer is just ask why. Right? Yeah. Why did someone start something? Why? That's right. You know, why are they making decisions in this fashion? Right. Um, try to kind of peel back the layers of the onion. Right, right. And the interviewee really needs to look at your culture, which your your uh, open book when the when somebody comes in to interview, you inter show them around and meet, meet the others, and so they can interview if this is where they want to want to be as well. Yeah. So yeah. Did you ever have any you know difficulties either early in life or college or even in young in, in your career where you just it just wasn't working for you and you had to either change completely or hop over the problem or I don't know, fire yourself from the job and go do something different. Do uh, you have anything like that that happened? Um, well, I think, obviously, life is a, is a journey. There's always ups and downs. Right. Um, I think maybe one anecdote that, that could be tied to that, um, and hopefully a broader message, because it had a big impact on me. Um, a lot of my inspiration comes from my parents and the sacrifices they made, mm -hmm. both moving from very far away places. They were both the first to go to school. And so that was a big inspiration for me on the idea of make the most of the opportunities you have in front of you right. and also be grateful. I feel very blessed for the opportunities I've had. Yeah. And we live very fortunate lives, and I think it's easy to forget that, and I always like to remind myself just how lucky yeah, we are. You look around the world, there's a lot of people that don't have any opportunity, let alone the richness of yeah. what we, we all just assume is, is the case. Yeah. So a lot of these, you probably heard the saying, first world problems. Um, yeah. Uh, end up being first world problems. I lost my cell phone. <laughs> yeah, not not <laughs> the end of the world. world um, 
but one, one thing that did make a big difference in my life, in elementary school I was, um, you know, I was focused on academics, but I don't think it was a big, right. again, I was a very young child, but I remember right. in fifth grade having a parent-teacher conference um, where a teacher mentioned that uh, Josh has the potential, but he has to choose um, to do it to achieve that potential. It right. has to be his choice. It exists, but he has to pursue it. Yeah, yeah. And um, that statement is really powerful, and I think it actually had a huge impact on my academic focus from that point forward. And through middle school, high school, I was right. always very, very uh, much at the top of my class. Um, but I think that lesson can be more broadly applicable, not just right. to academics. I mean, the idea that we all have this amazing potential. I tell the team about this almost every day. You know, we have this opportunity to create something out of nothing. And that's the right. heart of entrepreneurship is to see a problem and to want to solve it so much that you're going to dedicate a lot of your time of your life and right. um, even if it seems like there's really high odds and really huge obstacles that prevent you, right. um, you're going to try to make it real and try to make something that seems impossible become possible. Yeah. And I think um, the idea of that opportunity being empowering and feeling right. that the sky's the limit, right. that we can do whatever we put our mind to, um, is, is really what, again, started from that fifth grade experience, but it's been a huge lesson for me in my so life. So it's fifth grade, and uh, it was sort of like a negative feedback from teacher to your parents and maybe you. Yeah. You know, hey, he's he's got it, but... Uh, I don't think I was doing the best. Maybe, maybe I was getting not. like a B yeah. or something in there. Oh, a B. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think, maybe in fifth grade they don't even have ABC. Yeah, it was like yeah. The number system, I think. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, how did you even get into Stanford? That, to me... You know, there are not many people that get into Stanford at all, let alone how well you did. Like, how, did you set your sights on that, or did you? was it just easy for you? Um, so I think maybe connecting it to high school as the in-between period, um, mm -hmm. to kind of be personal about it, I actually started high school fairly overweight, um, mm -hmm. pretty introverted, not very um, kind of social. Mm -hmm. And I remember having this kind of thought process kind of tied to that fifth grade story, which was, mm -hmm. um, I have control over this. I can make the choice. Right. And um, by the time I graduated, I was in a varsity sport. I had lost about 60 pounds. Wow. Um, I uh, was voted, I guess, the most changed person in my high school in the <laughs> yearbook. Um, and obviously, I think for Stanford, they care a lot about being well-rounded and having these different aspects of you that yeah. um, you've explored. And I think for me in high school, that experience of exploring right. really was through all facets of my life. I mean, whether it was exercise, sports, um, leadership, um, public speaking, um, right. you know, it was a really big development for me to go through that experience. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Stanford is an amazing institution. I, I love having gone to Stanford. But there's a lot of places where you can build that type of foundation. Um, we have some teammates that obviously went to great universities, some that didn't even go to universities, but have figured out right. that they, they have this choice on kind of how they spend their time and what they want to do with it. And they want to you know, really focus on things that give them fulfillment and make an impact. Uh -huh. um, and that's why they're a part of the Zen Payroll team. Cool. Wow, you've just done so much. So I got a, uh, another personal question for you. Yeah. What's the greatest gift you've ever given to someone? <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about, Doug. Um, so, you know, I very much believe the most important decision I'll ever make in my entire life is who I choose to marry. Mm -hmm. um, and two weeks ago, I proposed to my Don't girlfriend. Run. Yes. And that would definitely be the most important, um, um, so meaningful you, gift I've ever given someone. To yourself, actually. You and gave to a gift to yourself. Well, that's really neat. Congratulations on that. Thank you so much. So, and congratulations, Susan. I hope to meet her sometime soon. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's really neat. Well, you know, I just want to thank you for being here with us. Uh, it's been really neat to have you take us down the path from the college student's perspective. We've been interviewing several uh, folks about you know business in different different ways, but I think it's really important for us to hear what you said about mentoring students, helping them kind of. Uh, follow to some extent in your footsteps or find their own paths to, to follow. So thanks for that. Oh, I, I appreciate it. I mean, I think just on that topic, um, I've written an article in the Wall Street <laughs> Journal about the power of entrepreneurial ecosystems. And it's not just technology. This isn't a zero-sum game. Yeah. You know, the chance that we have to share knowledge, share advice. Um, you know, with Zen Payroll, we want to make people's lives easier. But also, yeah. when you are starting a business, there's a lot that we can share, even in this forum. Um, and then I hope that others continue to share because it's it's really the secret to these businesses succeeding in the long term. Yeah. Well, 
I wish you all the luck and congratulations on your new engagement. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. So thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you next time.